and I'm just gonna get start, start to record because usually um, I get to have um, hey Google what's my, the temperature outside my uh, some Ottawa, of it's my favorite uh, friends Talmidim like people that I'm now family with right right uh, because uh, we've had the opportunity now this is the um, going into the fourth night of of our retreat of our we of our time together and it's been absolutely amazing and fabulous and now we're on the uh thursday night and every single day is exactly the way it's supposed to be and we're inching into shabbat and we had the great opportunity and the great school to do it with uh shall have it over here <laughs> who's usually on the other side of the screen like like you guys and shall have its husband sir al mayor Michael and Jane, all the way from California, all the way from California, and Rebecca, Rivka from Oregon, and of course everyone knows uh, the famous the the famous um, Michaela. And as I was mentioning, that every single week here in Ascent is just absolutely different. This week there are just soldiers that are coming in to be inspired by by the city and. And so we get a chance to really sit together and uh, and delve into probably one of the most important minor holidays that we have, and that is second Passover. Tonight is sec second Passover. What is second Passover? Because we know about the first Passover. I want to dedicate this class in honor of the healing of uh, Baruch, Baruch HaKohen. Ben, uh, uh, Bronya. ben Bronya. okay and to the healing of anyone that is in need of of healing spiritual physical emotional and uh all all for the all for the all for the good yeah. so here we are second passover where does second passover come from where do we know the source of it when the man approached Moshe and said why should we be allowed why should we be cut off from doing the face for them to he said they were impure at the time hmm. unfortunately it was a people who carried out the parents to find the land. amazing so the answer, uh, which Sir Almer correctly gave, is that we know Pesach Shein, the second Passover, and what what it is and where it came from from uh, this from in uh, the book of Bamidbar, Balotra, that there were they were uh, there were individuals who were holding who were carrying the coffin of Joseph, according to. That one opinion. They were holding the coffin of Joseph, who was instructed by, um, he instructed those that were going to bury him, make sure to take me out of Egypt, because I want to be buried in the Holy Land in Shechem. Eventually, he was taken there. He was taken from there. He was taken back there. And it says, that's why the sea split. What did the sea see? Right? The, the, the ark. Because there... His wife was from Dina. Dina came from Shechem, right? According to exactly, yeah. He wanted to be in Shechem, right? He, which, which, yeah, it's, Shechem is a very, very powerful place. Um, I would just side note, really, but uh, yeah, I was there a couple of months ago, and it's very, um, we could say, um, fiery. And I guess our what we're going to be delving into really has to do a lot with Yosef, with the concept of Yosef. And it's very interesting how the turn of events went that, that way, but that is more esoterically, that's more on a deeper level, on a shot level that we're supposed to really understand the facts of what went on. The facts were that these individuals held the coffin of Joseph and the Passover uh, came along the commandment, the second Passover, right? The second year, they, they, they were commanded to do things in a certain way. And they said, okay, we're ready to do this. 
But the thing is that they were ritually impure because in order to eat the Paschal lamb, one has to be pure, meaning not uh, uh, touching or having, having a, now it's, it's a complicated way of, uh, in, in the Talmud of understanding what, what these laws are. They're almost, you could understand them almost in, in terms of uh, 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 like almost like pandemics, right? God forbid, right? They, we, we understand that they're able to transfer. So there's an idea like that. You know, on, on a very metaphysical level, the whole idea of Tum and Tahara, the Maimonides says, is something that we don't really logically understand. But that's the reason that Kohanim, please God, all Kohanim should be healthy. That, that's why Kohanim are not supposed to be within, you know, close or in the vicinity or going into a cemetery because of this ritual purity that they have and not coming in contact with um, anything which is impure which its source is uh, the opposite of life. Now, they were carrying the coffin of Joseph, and, the, and it was instructed through Moses, through Moshe, that they may not partake in the, uh, in the Passover. It's only the second year. They, they may not uh, partake in it. And they said, what's going on? Like, Why? Lama nigara, like why should we not have a chance to do the right thing? Have we done anything wrong? We didn't do anything wrong. You know, we our intentions were correct. We we um, our consciousness were, were was in the right place. And not only that, we had the opportunity, the zechut, the merit to hold the holy bones of 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 Joseph, Joseph Hatzadik, no less that. Uh, that in his merit, the sea split. So, Lama Nigar, why should we, uh, why should we not get uh, the, the opportunity to bring the Passover offering? So to that, Moshe said, it's only one of two times, basically, that Moshe said, I'm not sure, I've got to consult the boss, right? I got to go. And it, and it wasn't his wife. But... <laughs> And he, right, and he knocked on heaven's door. He asked Hashem. He said, well, he had, he had an open door policy with Hashem. And he basically said, Hashem, God, I, I don't understand what's, what's going on over here. These people have a, a petition that they're putting forth. And Hashem says to him, they have a valid point. They have the point that they can bring the Passover and they get a second chance. And that second chance happened a, year, a month later from the, from the 14th of Nisan to the 14th of Iyar, which is exactly today, right? And therefore the energy of today, we know every holiday, a chag, comes from the word machog, which is, a, which is a circle. The Ramchal says that the circle means that there's an energy that happens in a holiday that affects all of time during that day, right? That's why our birthdays, are very important because the, our birthday commemorates a certain energetic beginning that started from the inceptional place of where we came from. So time has that, that ability to really transcend uh, to transcend things. So, so today we're, we're in that energy of the 14th of ER. And it's very significant for this to happen, for, for this opportunity that they had to basically say, we now have a second chance. And the whole idea of second chances is, is very, very profound because the second chance that, that they got, the Mishnah extends it even more. And it basically takes the view that someone that was on the way to Jerusalem and they were held up in traffic you know, the, they're all going up there for the three festive holidays, Aliyah Laregel, and whatever it is, you know, bumper to bumper, you know, cattle. And, uh, you know, they stop by or this, that, whatever it is. So they're, they're in a faraway place. They didn't have the opportunity to now bring the, the Pesach in its right time. The Mishnah says, time says you have a second chance, bring it a month later. 
In other words, not even if you're on the level of, of holding the, the, the coffin of Joseph, which they were righteous individuals, even if you're like, well, I tried and I was pretty close, but I didn't make it. And that's derech, I was on the way. Or okay. even more, rechoka, even more if the person's far away and he basically like starts packing his bags a day before and like you didn't like set up the, you know, that to happen and that. To, so now you're going to get on a plane and how do you expect to like really make everything or put in your your best to make everything as smooth as possible and you're like well but they had the thought that i wanted to make it that way the mishnah says that's good enough you have a second chance in other words even if you goofed and didn't make the plane you slept in you're like oh man i missed the flight which happened to me <laughs> um whatever, whatever that's the whole story you missed the flight and you're like, oh my God. And I know that feeling because right away, well, could I just change it to the next one? No, sir, that will be this much money. And I did it actually with my two children when we were in New York. And don't ask, it's the last, like I booked it June instead, July instead of June. It was like one of those things you're like, okay, you, you grow from these things, you know, you learn, learn extra. And, uh, anyways, you could say, well, what am I supposed to do now? You feel really down. But that's the second Passover. Second Passover says, it's 3,000, whatever it was, 200. I'm just like going back. To, I'm like, okay, Hashem, is, Hashem knows what's going to, how it's going to come back, why it happened. And you trust that it happened because it had to happen. And now I'm, I'm ready to go on. So that's the basic over, over, overview of Pesach Shein. So now I'd like to go like deeper into it based on the teachings of, of Hasidus. But Samach Tzedek teaches that there are three introductions to understand the concept of Pesach Shein on a deeper level. The first introduction is that it's called Chodesh Hasheni, the second month. Whereas the first month is the, called the Chodesh Arishon. And this is called the number two month. And it represents the concept of Iskafia versus Ishapcha, which means that the Zohar says that first you have to subdue yourself. In other words, if you love eating ice cream or whatever it is, or whatever you like to do, like a little bit excessively of, it's important that you have some sort of a, whatever it is, connection, if possible, right? Um, ideally, but like, le- but the first step is to actually sub- subdue and control yourself, like to put boundaries around. Well, I'm not going to have that extra piece of cake. I'm not going to have that extra. It's difficult, right? Like I, like I saw you uh, yesterday, Michael, we're having steaks and, and I'm like, Michael, we've got like these great looking steaks over here. He's like, nope. I, right. I, and I'm like, it's a lot of respect because that's really is. And he's like, I believe me, I, I love eating steak, you know, and, uh, <laughs> but health wise, you have to put, you have to put those, those, those boundaries. And, and that's, that's the beginning of, of really you know, anything, putting on the boundaries. And that's the first month, the month of Nisan. The month of Nisan is the month of of understanding that we came out of Egypt and we had had to stop acting like wild slaves, right? Like wild donkeys or boars that were whatever, you know? And that's like a slave type of mentality. No, you are now a free person. You are now going to, you know, take care of your, you know, the, your behavior and, and, and your, you know, and et cetera. Right. But the first thing is to act is, is to, to come to grips that you're an actual human and not acting like an animal. And that's basically a job of a, it says that the Egyptians were the most decadent society that they were compared to the Torah says in 
last week's parsha, they were compared to um, they were compared to the donkeys essentially because it was the most decadent. Lotasu kemase mitzrayim. They were they were the most. Anyways, the the Israelites were seeped in there, and in order to come out of that reality, they had to first realize that they are not animal like. In other words, not everything, you know, monkey see, monkey do, or yeah, I need to follow that train, you know, trail of thought, or I need to feel that, or I need to do that, and I need to instinctively, you stop yourself, and you have, that's called iskafia. Like, you have to just, like, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's pause. And what's ishabcha? That's the second month. So the second month, that's the month of ER, it's called the month of Ishapcha, of transformation. And we're going to talk about it in a second. That's just the first introduction, okay? Second introduction, Samach Tzedek says, is that the first month, which is Nisan, is compared to the Sphera of Malchut, of kingship which is called the petach, the, the opening. And it says that God, Pasach ala Pesach, that he jumped over Pasach, over the petach. And what's the petach, the, the entrance? Entrance is the sphere of Malchut, right? Hashem Svatai Tiftach is Hashem Adnai, open up my, my mouth, right? Tiftach Patach. And that's the entrance that we go into prayer, which is the connections between Geula and Tefillah, which is Malchut, which is Yesod and Malchus, which are both really join, joining together, which is actually Yesod and Malchus. So what's Yesod? That's the month of Er. is compared to the, to the, to the, um, the sphera of Yesod, which is Yosef. So there's a first elevation and a second elevation. The first elevation is the... Is the is the transformation, right, that the tribes kind of had, the, tw- the 11 tribes. And then the second transformation is the transformation of Joseph. They picked up their sheaves, and Joseph sees them, and he says, I'm in the center, and I'm actually picking up all of your sheaves. And now I'm bringing up a whole new thing. And brothers were saying, what? What do you do, Right. Because Yosef represents a different dimension, the, the dimension of Yesod. And the brothers represent Malchut kingship. So the first month, the month of Nisan, is the month of, of Malchut. Petach, opening. It's like, right? And it's very connected to the first Hakdama, right? Because... Uh, or introdu- introduction, because like by subduing yourself, you're entering a, a a a finite space, which you need to do in order to. In other words, everything is allowed. Everything is va- like there's no definitions anymore, right? Of you know, of right or wrong, and of and of a uh, morality, and of uh, legitimate, right? Um, so then. It's very hard to enter into a place of purity or anything beyond that because, like, well, everything is is equi- is morally equivalent to something, and you know, you make, well, why can't she be a he? Okay, and I'm gonna stop there mm-hmm. <laughs> to continue. Blachaim on that. To, well, yeah, Hashem should have mercy on us and give us. Uh, well, I think it's pretty clear. It's clear to a three-year-old, the birds and the bees, this is a boy and that's a girl. And it's not, uh, but anyways, if everything is, 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 then we don't have an open, then we don't have an opening. And that's the idea of Malchut. The idea, the idea, yeah. the idea, of, no boy, of, no girl. Yeah, the idea of the initial restriction, the initial thing is, is really, once, once you come out of each line and once you come out of, that mentality, there's a tendency to to want to say that those people were free and I was enslaved to those people. And so freedom really represents doing whatever the heck you want. But that's not freedom. No. Freedom is 
your control over your own base or instincts. So the first mm -hmm. level is to say, that's not freedom. That's a different kind of slavery. And so when I enter freedom, I enter freedom as a controlled entity mm -hmm. uh, because I am actually free to control my baser instincts and free to control my own mitzray and my own physicality. That is that is the first step of freedom, mm -hmm. is the idea that you are free mm -hmm. to choose to mm -hmm. control your um, your baser instincts. Which makes you free. Which makes you free. Right. And that's why it says by the giving of the Torah, they're called charut ala luchot, that they're inscribed on, on the tablets. So the, the Talmud says, don't read it inscribed, read it charut, which means inscribed. Read it cherut. In Hebrew, cherut means freedom. To have an inscription, to have that, exactly, you know, that path, that, 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 that focus, basically, from being unfocused, and having that focus is 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 freedom because because now you have a, a way and that's why when you give someone a, a job for example you're actually doing the greatest job the, the greatest uh the maimonides says the greatest uh type of charity for them because they are you could give them money and 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 you could be like well they still don't know how to really harness it and do what they need to do but when you give them a job you're giving them a a skill set, a direction, and now they now they could support themselves, and that's the greatest you know dignified way that they could really live. And so you're doing a great you know great service by doing that. But and that's what God did to us. He said, "You are you were slaves to the Egyptians. Now you're going to be my slaves." Avadahim, and it says like I have now made you my slaves, but. But it's very different to be a, a, a it, the Talmud says that a, that a servant of a king is like a king. But that takes work. It's not like, oh, it's good to be the, the, you know. It doesn't say the son of the king, the prince, because princes are always, always spoiled, right? It's actually the servant of the king. And that's what we refer to Hashem as Avinu Malkinu. You're also our, you're also our king. So you're going to say, oh, you're our, you're our father, you're our father. But it's like. Well, but you're not really acting the way you you should be acting because you're privileged and you have so much. Again, but if you're a, a slave, then you have the work and the and the um, the perseverance, the skill set, the uh, you know the integrity, and that's what Hashem wants from us. He wanted to transform the consciousness of being slaves to a moral to to a, a mortal a mortal and amoral thank you exactly a moral decadent society to what we're going to speak about now so that's the second introduction the third introduction is that it's called pesach sheni the second pesach right right what does pesach mean to jump over to leap over so there's a first leaping, and then there's a second leaping. The second leaping is much higher than the first leaping. So there's a leap that you could take. You know, kids, you know, play this leaping game. You can play a leap, and I leap. And then the other kid is going to go like, no. And they go back and actually go forward and like jump over. Right? It's, it's, in, it's in the Olympics, right? So, you know, they have like the, the who's going to jump further? A long jump, right? Thank you. So we've got uh, we could say the short jump or the first jump is the jump of Passover, the first Passover. Second jump is this jump over here. So what does this all really mean, and how does it really tie together? So in a beautiful uh, mimer, the Rebbe really brings this out in such a beautiful way, and I just want to say that today's the yurt site of the Rebbe's brother. Yisrael Aryeh Leib was buried here in Sfat. And the Rebbe had him, wanted him to be buried here in Sfat. He was a great professor from Liverpool. And uh, on the outside, it seemed like he uh, left, you know, the path of, 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 of Judaism and of his, yeah. on the outside. But on the inside, he was a very, very special individual to the point that he was so brilliant that he memorized Ma'amarim discourses 
many of them by heart, of many of them of the Rebbe Rashab, the, the, the deepest, the deepest discourses. He was a, he was a, he was a, a, a unbelievable type of a mind to the point that um, he had uh, the, the, the uh, previous Rebbe, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, had a dream that he told to the Rebbe about his brother. And so when a Rebbe has a dream, you know, and he said that, uh, the Rebbe writes this down in the Rishimus in his, in his, uh, in his works, and he said that um, I was there with, uh, with, in my father's chamber. His father was the Rebbe Rashab. And there were a, a number of great uh, Hasidim, great individuals that were there together. And your brother was there. And externally, his brother looked like he was secular. He was a professor of mathematics. And uh, he said he was there. And the Rebbe Rashab looked at him. And, you know, he told him and they conversed. And and the the and the the previous uh, Rebbe told told this to uh, to the Rebbe, and um, the Rebbe really took this in a in a in a new light because again his yurtzeit was today Yud Gimel, and leading up to the second Passover, the Rebbe really made a big deal from what Passover means in many ways, right, on a personal level, but on a almost like a like a really big thing to take this past to take this holiday and to make it something really significant. You know, on, on my drive here from where, where uh, we live. So I sometimes stop for hitchhikers, you know, I want to you know, help them out and give, you know, and so I took someone in and I said, you know, set them, you know, today's second Passover, you, you know, can you, can you just, can you, do you, do you know anything about it? And this was a, uh, a, a religious in, individual. And, um, and he basically said, well, we eat some matzah. And he didn't know anything about it. And many people don't know anything about the second Passover they because they don't learn Hasidus, because they don't learn the inner dimension of, uh, of, of, of the Torah. Um, hi, Chaya. Uh, Baruch Hashem. Hashem thereby. Amen. So we can understand this with these three intro, uh, introductions, okay? Understanding what second Passover is. And again, it's a profound uh, lesson. So it basically says that the level of, the, that all three introductions really feed into each other. That the first level of, or the first Passover represents the the base and the entrance that we're that we start off with in other words you can't skip that step and that step is you want to go through a door or you want to go into a room you have to go through the door you have to go through malchut if you want to go to a transformational place in your life that you're really feeling good that you're really you know, feeling happy that you're feeling healthy, whatever, you know, your goals are, you have to go through a, something that you're saying no to. Because if you're saying yes to everything, you're basically saying no to, Many other things. to right, to your, possibly to your, you know, to yourself. Oh, this person is taking my attention or that individual is taking my attention. So you're giving a lot of yeses but you're basically saying a no to you, to what you need to pay attention to. So saying no to those uh, secondary or, you know, kind of things, which you may want to really help the people with and to really pay attention to, but right now is not the, not the right time for it. Right now you have to almost stop things, you know, and there's a lot of people that in, here in, in Tzvat, I, I was telling you, Sarah Mary used to teach here in the yeshiva which, uh, and a seminary, which we kind of still, and those young and sometimes older individuals, they, they check in 
they're they're basically supposed to check in for you know they're like you could say jewish monks you know in a way like training they they're you know you can't be like a spiritual master or you know or or scholar or anything like that if you're constantly on 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 facebook right which makes things really really complicated for the for our young generation who are aspiring to to really go into the books and it's very hard right but is the answer to say i'm not going to have any technology at all so for many religious individuals it is because then you can have the ability to be what i'm going to study and I'm going to be a Talmud Chacham and to, right? Not for myself, right? Because that's also a selfish thing. And that's a discussion in and of itself of, you know, we have to take the time off and just check in. And it's not so comfortable all the time. And dinner isn't always great. And your roommate is not, you know, and all these things. But you're like, well, I'm just putting things on the side, you know, for now. That's, 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 that's how it's going to be. And then that's, that's the entrance point. Then comes the transformational point. That's the second Passover. Transformational point is now what about that young or older boy or girl, man or woman, when they go back to where they came from? They go back to their parents' home. They go back to their jobs. They go back to their familiar familiarity of things well now what so again fam familiarity could be in the same place and transforming could be in abstaining could be in the same place ideally we're supposed to do the two of them in the same at the same time right but there are times generally in in, in our life and in our days that we spend in if it's prayer or if it's learning. And those are the times that we kind of like subdue ourselves. It says, Adam kiyamus ba'oil. It should be a person that will die in the, in, the, um, in the tent. So the Talmud says, who's that? That's someone who puts everything off from the world. And it's as if they are so submerged in the tent of Torah. That I'm just super hyper focused for hours. You know, they say about the the Rebbe when he like he used to put his foot on, on the on on a certain um, sill, or whatever it was, and he used to open up a book and they used to see him like at a certain hour, like twelve. They would come back at five in the morning. He was in the same position, but he finished the book on the other side of the book. I mean, like, so that's not that's beyond like that's a you know beyond like a humanly kind of uh uh genius and concentration you know and putting everything aside but being like so submerged in the in the oil in the tent of torah that is ideally we should be able to do that with the the five minutes that we open up you know our chitas that we open up and we say uh humash of the day or we say the uh, psalm psalms of the day or we have a shir that we learn or, uh, you know, a, a class that we're focusing on, you know, so we're not focusing on other things per se, right? We're focusing, we're here, we're dedicated to this, we're doing this. And that's, that's the level of iskafia. And that's the 10,000 hours that, that people say, you know, and, um, and that's the first Passover. So one has passed over themselves to really you know, take this leap, you know, and it is a leap and it, and it shouldn't be un, uh, uh, recognized for being a leap because it's not easy to do that. Like, and that, that's why many people don't do that because it's easier to be just, uh, reactive and, um, less, less mindful of, of, of any, you know, of our lives. Is that why it's a higher leap? So, so that's the first leap. That's the first primal. That is the basic leap. That it, it basically we don't know and, until tonight. You know, most people have not heard of second Passover because for us that is the leap, and that's what we celebrate on the Seder night. It is a huge leap, 
but it's God almost doing that for us on a, on, on a big way. Like, he, like, it's almost like, like, a, like, like a little child and you see like they, they're doing something and you're like, what, it's not so amazing. Or you see like a little, uh, or a student that, that, that's answering a question. You're like, wow, that's such a great question. So the teacher, whatever, they get so, so excited for that accomplishment, but it wasn't like compared to the teacher or you compared to the, like, it's not such a big, you know, you just did that whoopee you know and someone older than them will say what's the big deal but it was a big deal because that kid went out of their way to do something which was extraordinary and the parent kind of like commends them and that's what happens to us on passover the first passover hashem commands us and we we celebrate that that evening with great uh uh fanfare we have the four cups of wine we eat we drink we say we have you know the, the whole seder is a beautiful orchestration we say that that the hallel right we sing it's a it's it's the greatest party so that is really the leap that we're that is the the, the leap right the first leap but well, here comes the second leap and it's a much more subtle leap because you could be in a state of okay i'm working on myself but deep down i'm unhappy deep down i'm not serving Hashem with the much as much joy as really I know I'm capable of where I should be. And the reason for that is because because to come from darkness into light is hard, but in a sense, it's harder to come into further light once you're quote doing the right things, you're in the light. You know, you're a, a good person. You're a moral person. You're a tax paying, you know, individual. You are, you know, you're not littering. You're not, you know, cutting people off. You know, you're giving an old lady the parking space. You're, you're a good person. And absolutely, you know, you're, you're working on yourself. But the second Passover says, you know what? I'm leaping to a place of light, of being truly my soul. That's the second Passover. First Passover is I'm going to stop being such a, excuse my uh, Yiddish schmuck, right? Schmuck. I'm going to stop be acting like, you know, like this, that person is just careless and just not nice and not, you know, attentive. And I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to now work on myself to try to be more attentive and to be better, etc. So we and and that's the work of basically the sphere at the Omer that we do. But the work is not just to stay there, but the work is is to own it and to be transformed by the 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 biology that just becomes this new individual. That just on a cellular level, it has just been done in a way that now this is really who I am and now my soul could finally shine in the place that I know that I've been working on because that's avoda avoda's work but then avoda is there's there's work of the basic you know the raising up of the animal which is what we do in the temple right that's the that's the idea of the animal we're taking that that animal we're we're bringing it up that's a major part of the work in the temple work of the animal different types of animals um hello hello <laughs> in here no <laughs> there's you know that was a <laughs> no, that was ali yeah ali, ali so there's different there's different parts of our of our animal right but then there's a higher level of offering and that's the offering of the incense and that's the offering that was brought inside of the temple. We're reaching up, we're inching up to Lagba Omer. And it says about that day, right across from here, the Rashbi Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai said that what Bechad Katirna it Katarna, that I was one with God, with Hashem. With one not. With and Hashem. the idea of the Katorit, the, the Katorit is the incense. That being one. With with God, the, those eleven spices represent the transformation, whereas the first spice, where, whereas the first, um, the eleven is the 
the 11 is quote like the other side it seems like there's disparity and whatever that there's there's the, the transformation that's the transformation of the second passover which we're reaching up to because second passover is already the week of hod the week of hod is the week of lagba omer always these 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 days we have the yurtzai of Rabbi Meir Balanes tonight, mm -hmm. who Rabbi Meir Balanes, we say, there's a Lokadameir Aneni, Lokadameir Aneni, someone who needs the illumination. Again, the illumination, that's Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir Balanes. He's standing up, yes. And God willing, I'd like to, I'd like to go there. Yeah, that would be nice. Tomorrow, yeah. Go there tomorrow. So, yeah, so I wanted to, we're going to pivot that. Soon. Yes. In, in, so, um, facing the Sea of Galilee. Yes. So, God willing, if um, yeah, that's, I'd like to go there and put in some prayers in there. It's a powerful place, especially on his on his on his yurt site. Everything pivots. So, yeah, I'm very excited to see uh, the Kinneret. God willing. So we have Rabbi Meir Balanes, which which is which is today. Rabbi Yudha Barila is also today. And the right, Rabbi Yudha Barila, who's buried over here, not far from here. And they have actually a bonfire, which they're going to be lighting. So maybe uh, very soon. So, so let me see if I got this. Yes, I'm going to. So, so you go through, you go through the first Passover. And you internalize you internalize your physical transformation and your control over your physical baser emotions, uh, needs, whatever you you. And so so you've passed over, and now you've stabilized at this new step, right? So now you're here. Mm -hmm. You passed over. You leaped over. Mm -hmm. You're now at this at this point, right? So, so what you're saying is that the second Passover is really the movement, number one, the movement beyond that into, into internalizing the light into a, a more uh, holistic um, approach to, to using the light in a more so, inclusive manner, right? Yes. That's that's one way of looking at it. I, so the the point over there that the Rebbe brings is that the the leap is not just a leap of leap. That's right. one way. That's that's from us, right? Right. But it's actually a higher leap from the source itself. That there's so that there's that there's that, that there's an energetic pull. source pull that's coming from a higher place. So there was the first Passover. Passover it says God also leaped. Mm -hmm. That's the leap of Passover, Passover right? Yeah, Passover. So there's the Passover. God leaped. Not that that was a tremendous leap because we were on the we were on such a low level, but the leap almost from us and where it met us was exactly the right place. But the second Passover is like we're leaping beyond that, and God is meeting meeting us even beyond it because God is infinite. God is infinite, and just that that portion of we could say of god's finite you know god's outstretched hand and wasn't it you know or or whatever but but really within the first passover god jumped over everything you know it, it was it was it was himself but god is infinite he's atmos he's the essence referred to so during the second passover we have uh the inability to tap into that so is that saying that in the in the first Passover we're leaping over some we're leaping over into a physicality that we can conceptualize and know we can understand that leap over the, the leap over into a controlled environment to control mm -hmm. freedom. But the second leap occurs into some place where we don't know the outcome, mm -hmm. where we don't see where we're leaping to we're just 
we're just leaping into something where we, we have stabilized in a place where we know that God will catch us and we're just leaping there and God is catching us. That's why it's, that's why it is so hard. Okay. And that's why most people have not heard of the second Passover because it's not something that most people can um, really even like wrap their minds around because like, let me first get a hold on not being this type of individual, but to, to really be living this godly uh, divine existence, which is the whole intention of the creator, right? As we know from, from Kabbalah, that God wanted to give us the greatest good possible. He created us. And it seems like the, you know, the opposition, the obstacles are just random things that are not really like in on our plan, right? But essentially those random things that seem like they're really just him waiting for us to call out to him so that we can be able to be on the same frequency or a similar frequency, which is beyond our will to receive that limited will of the frail the vulnerable animal soul mentality the traumatized animal soul mentality but to go beyond that to be within the godly souls infinite possibility and that's so that's why it's your soul because that's your soul because you're the first pastor where you need to be in the in the molecules in a in a physical physical presence that you are used to you know you you leaped over it mm -hmm. you know you can see the end of it you may not like it you may not like to be in control right but you can see it but on your soul on the your soul level mm -hmm. you're leaping into a into an into an existence into the great a unknown that you don't you don't understand yet right and you're scared of and why because you like your comfort, you like you like the control. We let because that we've we've been biologically wired that way, and 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 it's there for our protection to be able to have that um, that ability to decipher and to have the control. So it's there from Hashem Himself, but the same way He, you know, gave us that biology, also gave us the the hidden part. And that's like hidden inside of us. And that's the, the great, you know, neshama chelek eloka, the second soul, which the Tanya says, the second soul, the first soul, the Tanya, Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, is the animal soul. But nefesh asheni should be Israel, this chapter based, the second soul that's found, in nefesh eloka mimal mamish. There's a divine soul, mimal, from above, mamish. And the word for that, what is mamish? Literally, it's like mamash. Like you hold on to like mamashut, like something. So how, how could you, how could you feel that? Like that's it's spiritual. It's ethereal. How do you have chelik mal mamish? So the the ex, they explain, you know, the idea of what the Alter Rebbe was saying with that term is that the essence becomes revealed in this world. That just like you have the essence, which is the closest to a rock. And when we compare Hashem, he's actually referred to as sewers, like almost like this, this. And that, that essence is, re, is, is, is revealed within us. Now that's a very, that's, that's the fifth level of our soul. And that's the level of beyond the nefesh. It's a level of, of Yechida. And again, it connects to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It was on the level of Yechida, of being completely one. And it may seem like, well, who am I and what am I? But, you know, but the, the Rabbi says, like, our generation, this generation is able and capable of being tzaddikim, being on that level. Because to be able to absorb and to receive, like, infinite, infinite possibilities light of hashem like like we know that from technology like technology is like you know so hashem is saying like you we've got the technology inside of us and science is saying that we've got el elasticity like we're able we're, we're gonna be able to to do that 
so we're now we're almost like setting forth the preparation and we're doing like the learning we're doing like the prep work so we have like a little bit of the terminology that when finally like things become clear and the author says in Tanya also that when things become clear it's not going to be like the same as reading it from books but it's going to be experiential experiential godliness divinity like you're experientially happening it's not just in your mind it's not just in the books it's not just tradition but it is like it's actually felt on on the level of mamish like you're 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 feeling it in in the day to day right living it like really living it seeing the basically seeing the energy and seeing the hand of god in your daily life in the in the in the things that you do on a daily in a in a in the physicality of the world exactly down to the lead that's the lead that's on the cellular level (laughs) on the body level that the body is not just harnessing or restraining himself or herself but the body is like I am going to enjoy this wine, or I'm go- I'm not going to abuse it. I'm not. I'm going to enjoy this food. I'm not going to abuse it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm gonna for Hashem's sake, and for I'm now godly. See, and I'm now, now I'm going to I'm going to see the energy that's in there. Exactly. That is the godly energy, and I and understand why it is that I'm and the joy, and that's really the point. The second Passover is a joyous day because. Hashem is saying, look how much I, I love you that I've given you this, so you should enjoy me. So you're, I've, I've given you this, so you could learn me. I'm in that place. I'm in the experience. I'm in the moment that you're literally in. And that's, that's a game changer. Because every interaction is, is a possibility of knowing him in that moment. like. Today, I was, you know, we were in the supermarket and there was this, per- what, we all have inter- interactions like this with people and you're like, you're ready to go back to your habitual, like, kind of like, you know, kind of a thing. And you restrain yourself. Well, you know, that just opened up something tremendously. You just restrain yourself. So the next time that's going to happen, you may be able to to not feel as ticked off by something because and and you're observing that you're seeing that you're seeing that there's that space in between and that's a higher level of of iskafia it's not just subduing in the first place you know being restrained from doing you know crazy stuff you know with but now you're like you're like oh i'm watching i'm restraining wow you know what i'm actually pat myself on the back for that because i'm not having that could be a level of like joy they say this on, on, on Shabbat, for example, if one has to like fast for whatever different reasons, like a person sees some sort of a dream or something like that, which doesn't necessarily apply to us nowadays. But like for them, the joy that they have is like not not eating. So you could have joy in the in the in the restraint itself, which is a very high level. That's the level that the iskafia, the level of iskafia actually becomes you're you're feeling this joy. I'm I'm not doing something, but I'm giving God so much nachas right now. I'm giving God so much delight by that. By, you by. Give, you give nachas to God by eating every holiday and there's no break before, between the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Listen. I wish not eating. There you go. So you, we, putting that restraint is is a joy because we're going to feel better. So now I feel better. I'm, I'm able to be happy or more present. And I don't have to be happy just by eating. I could be happy because the environment. I could be happy because of a new idea that I have or a new uh, whatever way of looking at the holiday that I'm in. Like the, it's not just the joy of, of food. You know what I'm saying? But it is the, 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 the joy. It is a joy that we have when we restrain ourselves. So we could tap into that joy of re- of restraining, but yet it's not it's not the ultimate. 
the ultimate is that when we can, and it's of course permissible, you know, according to halakha, and it's permissible, you know, according to our health, and you know, so then, and and it is, for example, so, you know, so then I could have something in moderation and enjoy it. And maybe sometimes it's not in moderation, but it's okay because it's the situation. For example, Purim is such a holiday. On Yom Kippur, we restrain ourselves. By Yom Kippurim, Yom Kippurim, the Zara says, is a day like Purim because Purim is higher than Yom Kippur. Because on Purim, you're eating and drinking. You're dr drinking, right? Getting drunk, intoxicated. On Purim, well, because the Torah is saying, you know what? In that joy, that excessive joy and simcha and shefa and you know and party you're 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 partying with me and that's a great thing you know having simcha having that level of of joy is the joy of the second passover really and so this this day and, and the joy which in second passover is leading to the joy of rabbi shimon bar yochai's day of Lagba Omer, which is the letters Gal, which is to open up our, our, our eyes. That's what Lag actually means. Gal Eina Ve'abita Niflot Mitaratecha. And we do that by learning Chassidus, by learning the inner dimension of, and, and Kabbalah, by learning the inner dimensions of, of Torah more, because that is a, a spirit, that's a spiritual delicacy, but not just a delicacy, a, a necessity. And it's, you know, it's like basically like, bread it's like cheese it's like wine it's like oil it's like all the ingredients you know Here. the torah is like it's like it right so by filling ourselves up with learning we have we have the opportunity to really be able to make those shifts on much more of a of a realistic level you know Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, we could ask in a different way. You know, we could say like, sometimes you see in traditional circles, there is certain abuse of if it's eating, drinking, or if it's whatever it is, is that's not in, a, in, in the right um, format or moderation, whatever you want to call it. The truth is that you cannot judge Jews by by uh by Judaism, right? Right? You 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 know you judge you judge the uh, uh, it's 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 the Torah. Like that's our that's our standards, right? That's our highest standards. And Nase Adam says about Rabbi Shimon, Nase Adam Nemar Ba'avurecha. Man was I made man was for like to look up to people like that, like the Rashbi, like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, like Rabbi Meir Balanes, who was like this. Almost Rabbi Meir really is a super, a superhero. That's where superheroes really came from. There's superhero stories about Rabbi Meir Balanes that he leaped in time and space. Like literally, the, the, the Talmud says unbelievable tales about Rabbi Meir that he went to Rome one time and then he extracted his sister-in-law and he took her out. And it says the Baal Shem Tov said that he's he's a spark. He has that spark of Rabbi Meir. Within him, Rabbi Meir is called Nehorai, Illuminator, and um, the Baal Shem Tov had that, you know, that that idea. And and the Hasidic Rebbe's, you know, they made the soup really Marvel comics. There's there's a book on it, you know, uh, Stan Lee. He uh, he he grew up with hearing Hasidic tales, mm -hmm. so he was like, wow, there was this holy Rebbe from this town, and he helped. And that's the story of the Golem of Prague of the Maral. And, and, you know, we hear about these superheroes, but those su superheroes were really superheroes of, you know, of tzaddikim. I was just by a house earlier praying mincha, and there, there was a whole, whatever, yurtzai kind of a thing. But the whole house was filled with images of tzaddikim. They were a real, like, Moroccan type of uh, house. And you see, like, all of these images of, of, these, of these tzaddikim that were there. It was it literally it was like almost filled from from they had a very modest little uh, living room, you know, where they were praying and they were making a certain suda, a certain meal for, and um, the entire room was just filled with sadikim images. It's something that Moroccan Jews, especially they and, and Ashkenazi Hasidic, you know, 
It's like, wow, 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 wow. Let me hear about it. And I've heard that Rabbi Meir is kind of the, the Shefa, the, 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 the king of doing prayers for Shefa. Yes, exactly. So Shefa is, is abundance. And so the next day, we've, we've got three amazing days, right, that, that we're in. Because the third day on Shabbat, we've got the day which is the full moon, which is the 15th of ER. And that, we're told, was the day that the manna started to come down. Meaning Shefa, like the manna comes from the word, word man, which actually maybe the m- money, right? If Avram Dahan would say, well, I didn't want to see the source of that. I, well, I don't know. Well, definitely sounds similar. The man. So the man is Shefa, but it's not just, it's, she- it's not just money. It is, but it's on all levels. Because on all levels, God wants us to have abundance in truth, right? Because it, on, on all levels, like on, on the, on the on the Mashiach level, which 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 we are going to, be, which we're basically in, we're in that, and we have a choice of like seeing that or not. But in Mashiach reality, like it says, you know, the land of the land of Israel is going to be filled with the knowledge of Hashem on all levels, and there's going to be fruit of the land, and though they're going to drink the wine, and they're going to have all the you know, olives grow and you literally see Hashem's prophecies are, are, are here, like on the land of Israel. You like, you're just open there. You're like, wow, this is, this is Geula. You know, this is Mashiach reality. And, um, you know, we have the, we have the ability to see that, that this is, this is reality. We have maybe not see it because, you know, we're, you know, not not ready, but when we do the work, like we we are really ready to to see Mashiach reality. But Mashiach reality in a very practical level, how could I see Mashiach reality inside of me, inside of you? And, you know, Mashiach is called children, Altigu Mashiachai. And so there's a beautiful teaching that you know children is, are are just very pure, right? And um, so too we have that Mashiach inside of us. Mm-hmm. And that's that that's that place of purity. And when you when you look at someone and you're almost looking at them like this this individual is is a child, always will and always has been. And he or she is a child of someone. And therefore, it just puts it in it just puts it in a certain perspective because now you're able to have more compassion. We're able to have like a different perspective. It's not judgmental, reactive. So even, even in our, in, in not even spe- you know, in ourselves to have that that level of, uh, of of living, living Mashiach, right? And it's again, easier said than done. And it's and it's, but but we we have to learn about it. You know, the Rebbe said actually to. What do we have to do now to learn in Yanim of Geula and Mashiach, to learn things about Geula and about Mashiach? Because really that's that's the consciousness that we uh, are allowing in the world. When you're learning to see it, like when you're pregnant, you see pregnant women in the street, mm-hmm. when you buy a red car, red cars in the street. Right, you we see. Don't know how the sheep looks like, so Columbus mm-hmm. came out of a cloud for the Indians. They didn't have uh, how to see a sheep. Yeah. So if you want to see a sheep, we have to learn about money. The, we have it. exactly by learn by by learning. There is a book in But but exactly by learning these concepts, is that we're we're now saying we're now communicating on you know on some you know the same the same language so we can recognize it exactly so that's the idea of Pesach Sheni but Pesach Sheni is really that leap but that leap my friends is I'm telling this to myself like you know let's jump you know and jumping is you're like okay most you know a lot of times you know you want to jump and you want to know like I'm where am I going you don't want to you know just uh 
you want to be pre uh, have have the pre uh, precaution of course and that's that's that that makes sense you know but second passover is the safe place uh, Shem is saying like you know jump and this is like an opportune time that you know that that something is going to really finally like fuse in and re reorchestrate recalibrate and rewire and you know and really re rechannel something great and to believe in that because to to jump to, to jump takes takes faith it was a beautiful thing that um, we had a participant. Um, we have uh, Katya that she was mentioning and uh, Miriam was saying she's an Olympic gymnast. She flips in the air. So the whole time you have the control, but then when you're in the air, you're going to the unknown. But he says, she said, that's the place that is actually the most um, relaxing. Trans I don't know. I don't know the exact words that she said. The most stillness. The most stillness. It's in that kind of weightless, near <clears throat> waiting for something. To yeah, yeah. Because because you really are are putting forth something, and and you realize that Hashem is going to carry it. You don't know how where it's going to go, and how it's but but you're but you're but you're leaping right. So, I, I, friends, <laughs> you know, it's uh, leaping into the uh, the that unknown is is the unknown within us. The unknown within us is the, is amazing. It's great. It's way more that we than we could ever imagine. Hashem is giving us way more than we could ever 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 fathom and we know that it's been like that all the time but every step that we take we're like well maybe next one it's not going to be that way but like every step that, that you took you know that it's just like amazing but like maybe next step is not going to happen but now things are going to shift why like like you know it's gonna you know it's it's been it's been that way and and that's like that's the pers perspective shift of of stopping to worry as much as of the outcome that we have control over the outcome so you, we have control over what we put in and do that in but then giving up the outcome to hashem is is this leap but there's stillness there thank you because in that stillness you have the bitachon you have the stillness of all right i'm i'm actually happy and i'm good God, what do I have to worry about? God, Hashem, Hashem has got Hashem's got my back. Like, like. So then my inner reality transforms the outer reality. Right? And that's redemption. That's redemption. I leap every day. You are just on the second. So, Baruch Hashem, and we're supposed to take from that leaping of the second Passover every single day. That's the truth. That's why we have a holiday, not just a one-time shot, but we internalize the holiday. Actually, we consume, and then that now it's a nice idea to have some matzah because you're internalizing that message on a you know inside inside of your physical body because you're supposed to feel that the whole year. Just like you're supposed to feel the first Passover and and and, and Sukkot and Purim the whole year, you have Hanukkah in the, the entire year. You know, some of us have extended extended Hanukkah for like for at least three days. <laughs> executive decision of just, like, you know, just that's like, it. Extra, keep it up. I keep need extra two days. You know, keep the light going. <laughs> keep the light, the flame. That's it, Rabbi. Yes, Ari. How are you? How are you? Thank Hashem. you. Very good. So are you saying that the first Passover is the outer manifestation and the second Passover is more the inner? Is what you're saying? Yes. The second one is much more much deeper. It's the level of Yesod. It's the level of of um of transformation. 
And that culminates with Lagba Omer. It starts now. And it starts now Lagba and it culminates with Lagba Omer. And it's brought down in the in the Sfarim. It says that uh, these days be- between um, second Passover and Lagba Omer are very auspicious days to make to to make that leap, whatever that means for you. Again, you know, you you, you can't jump further than you can, right? You could tr- just try to jump a little further than you can. You, that's that's it. You're not asked to like you be like super a uh, superhuman like jump or like one of those Olymp- Olympic jumpers. And like, well, for me, that's not a that's not a realistic thing. Like the jump is is the jump that's beyond me. And then there's gonna be another transfer me and then there's gonna be another jump and but that's living like michael was saying living second passover every day is just extending myself just a little bit more in a real way uh every single day and how, and how does that lead towards shavuot then what does shavuot represent in this in this uh, progression of Gavur- um, what can you say that again? Shavuot. What is Shavuot? The next after like oh, we have seventeen days. Shavuot. How does that fit into? Uh, does it fit into this, or is it more connected oh. to the first passage? No. So that's a great, great, great uh, point because we may have missed like the Lagba Omer class, and I think it's like Lagba Omer is coming up before Thursday. But basically, from Lagba Omer until Shavuot, we have thirty-two days, which represent which the gematria of that is, sorry, just the opposite. There's 32 days from the beginning of the counting, which is lave, right? Which we're working on our heart. And then the next 17 days is tov, lave tov, which Rabbi Eliezer says, that's the biggest thing that you could really have, the biggest virtue that you could have, a good heart. Rabbi Yocham ben Zakkai says in the Mishnah, says, I see what he said more than anyone else, because the biggest thing is to have that good heart. And what's the good heart? Well, a lot of people are born with the natural, but good heart is like you're working on it. And then Tov, so these 17 days after Lag Baomer specifically, and they really continue this transition, takes us into Tov, into goodness really channeling the good right not just the work but now it's like almost like now it's like you know let the good times roll almost in a way like like you know like let's be you know like like let it let it really be like you know like that in 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 a real way so to prepare for that we have the lave we've got basically we were at the end of that time and that's the second passover and that's always in the week of in the same week, Lagba Omer and the second uh, Passover, the, the the measure of hod, of humility, and that's a whole okay. other that's a whole other point that humility is not just not knowing your yourself or your virtues, but actually knowing who you are, and knowing yourself is. You need you you is is not not being humble by by doing what you're capable of doing and shining the light that you're capable of shining. That's not being humble by saying no, I don't want to do that. And we all have that kind of uh, mentality. No, you know, I don't want to. Or you're able to shine that. So just do that. And that's these individuals who are carrying the, the coffer and they were holding. They were great individuals, but they were like. Hold on, hold on. We're going to hold up the whole, you know, procession over here. The whole nation has to stop. And everyone is like, oh, look at those guys. You know, they're so pretentious. They're stopping, you know, we'll look at them. They don't have enough, like, so what? What's the big deal? And they were like, no, no, no. We want to have this. We want to do this because because it's it's really who we are. And it's not pretentious to really assume that level of 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 leadership, of strength, of of uh success because that level of success is not you know it's not a, a selfish kind of a of, of of a thing but it's but it's 
what I'm called upon to do, you know, and each and each and every one of us in, in our, in our lives, to not run away from success. We face it, right? Like the bull, right? Head on the Taurus, right? Going, going, facing it and being like, well, I'm going to receive it. And um, so with that, um, Devora, I'm sorry. Yeah, Veronica, yeah, it was a great, it is still a, a happening, great time we had over here. Um, but yeah, we're definitely enjoying the, uh, the, the energy of, of revive, which, which is really centered around the second Passover. It's really centered all on this concept of like how we could see Geula and Mashiach. And that's really where we are, where we're all at um wherever we're we're at you know really trying to uh tap into that so with all of our blessings to each other and all of us really coming together and the energy of this day and in the merit of rabbi Meir balanes rabbi dabar Eli, rabbi shimon bar yochai the ariza um, so may we have mamish we have all the all the strength from all the tzaddikim waiting for mashiach to come as we culminate the netzach the netzach is like readying us for for like to win and the king opens up his treasure treasure chest because he wants to win and everything is there giving us all the the abilities to do so giving us the tools giving us so that we could then go into the week of Hod and begin with the week of Hod, which is Chesed of Hod, Pesach Sheni. And, uh, and step into Lag Bomer, which is Lag Bomer, which is such a, another major holiday, which, uh, which takes this, this light of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, signifying the, 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 the light of the bonfire and really being that, that, shall have it right being that light you know in being that 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 uh which keep on being that light you know and even stronger you know and uh and that's that's the blessings that we have so thank you guys so much for being here and um and may we may we really may we step into our light god willing Rabbi. step by step yes I, I was thinking 14 is also 14 is the Gemachi of David, which is kingship, 14. Right, right. Rabbi Yehuda bar Eli is actually a spark of David. You know, you're supposed to actually, the Arizal said you're supposed to meditate on the on, on certain meditation when you're by Rabbi Yehuda bar Eli, because he represents Malchut, actually, and the elevation of that into, I guess, a higher level. So there's deep reasons why Rabbi Yehuda bar Eli and Rabbi Meir are you know, connected to each other. Um, okay. So um, any other questions? Come, uh, uh, just a, a comment. Thank you for the light of your teaching. It was brilliant and it's overwhelming. And I'm going to absorb it and I'm getting healthier. And Ani, Hashem, Baruch, Hey ha was wonderful. That's been working for me every day. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. So let, let's 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 do that one, one more time right now for uh Jane's father, Mordechai again. No. Uh, Baruch Hakoin Ben Maisha Ben Bronya. Baruch Hakoin Ben Bronya and Mark. What was your Hebrew name again? Mordechai. Mordechai, Mordechai. you're Mordechai. Yeah, yeah. Mordechai. Yeah, uh, of um, uh, Leah. Leah. Okay, and anyone and all of anyone and all of us, you know, that that are need of any level of refua, right? The month of Iyar, Ani Hashem Rufecha, right? One more time, Ani Hashem Rufecha. Ani Hashem Rufecha. And visualizing the Aleph. And then the Yud, and the Yud, as clear, powerful channels of 
and light, of healing light and the resh coming together. Iyar, Ani, Hashem, Rofecha, knowing that you are healthy and you are healed and you are ready to live this next phase in your life starting today starting now so blessings everyone and wishing you a beautiful shabbat shabbat shalom everyone and happy happy second Thank passover you, Rabbi. Happy second Passover. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Shabbat Thank Shalom, you so much. Salman. Blessings. Thank you, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.